cut off one of my fingers. You know, he allowed that to happen. He could have prevented that. And I, I still to this day, I can't bend that finger anymore. I thought I'd cut off my finger. But praise God, you know, he just scared the heck out of me. And uh, it was pretty bad. And I thank God he did that to me, or allowed that to happen. You know, we might say that Satan did this, and the devil did that. And, but that, but the enemy, our enemy, our adversary, the devil, he doesn't do anything that God does not allow him to do. Right. And God did allow that for my good, yeah. to teach me a lesson. And I, the, my biggest, my first reaction was, not I'm upset I cut off my finger almost. I'm upset that I made him do that. Because he didn't want to do that. That hurt him to do that. Right. So, I hope I learned that lesson. The words of God are convicting, they're correcting. How bad could it get? Look at verse 92. Unless thy law had been my delights, it should have been perished in my affliction. Things can get pretty bad. You don't want to perish in your affliction because usually the Lord's trying to show you something. He's got his purposes. Well, you've seen me make the four pots to the teapot. Now I have to put them together. The problem with doing this the right way is that these pieces are so soft, I would just really make a mess. So instead of assembling these four pieces, I've got four other pieces that I made earlier today. And they've set up a little bit, and I'll assemble them. The words of God, they're not only convicting, but they're correcting. And they're not only convicting and correcting, but they're cleansing. And we mentioned that already uh, when we were talking about the divine nature, partaking of God's divine nature of virtue. But since you're in the book of Psalms, turn to Psalm 51. Here's some verses I know I didn't mention earlier about the cleansing power of that book. Now you probably know that Psalm 51 was written by David. And he wrote that psalm shortly after he'd been confronted about his sin with Bathsheba. All right? And this is a great model prayer for us. Because David had a heart after the Lord. And he he had gar uh, godly sorrow, if you will. Not worldly sorrow. You know the difference between David's repentance and Judas Iscariot's? They both repented. But Judas was repenting. He was sorry that he got caught. David was sorry because he'd sinned against God. In verse 4 there it says, Against thee only have I sinned. Now how could he say that? Because he definitely sinned against Bathsheba. He sinned against her husband Uriah uh, because he actually was the cause of his murder is what the Bible calls it. He definitely sinned against the nation of Israel. He was their leader. And what a poor example for a leader. But he knew ultimately any sin that goes for you and I is against him. It's against our Creator. And David knew that. And it, it hurt him that he had hurt God, that he had sinned against God. Now I'm going to make a, 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 an opening so the water or the tea or whatever we're going to make in this teapot can pass through to the spout. Sometimes potters will do this with one big hole. I like to do it with several small holes because not only is it stronger, but it also acts as kind of a, uh, a strainer. Or tea bag, or tea leaves, or whatever you've got in there. I take the spout and I usually cut that at an angle. I keep this place my tools up here. Something like that. And now there's a technique in pottery when a potter joins two pieces of clay together. It's called scoring and slipping. What you do is you scratch the two surfaces. That's the scoring part. If you guys have worked with wood at all, you know that when you join wood to wood and you do it properly, similar to this with the right adhesives and so forth, so that it becomes stronger than the wood itself. And that's no different with pottery. You know that handle that flew off earlier? <laughs> you know, I hardly barely could attach that. But if I would have attached that well, that handle was still flown off. But the two areas where I attached it to the pitcher, it's still been there. Because it becomes the strongest part. So 
So the slip, what is that? That's just the watery clay. It's usually what's in a bucket like this after a potter's been working. It's what was in that uh, melted jar after I dissolved that one thing. It's just watered down clay. So the potter takes that slip, you score both sections, and then he just joins it like that. And these things have set up a little bit, so they're no longer real soft, and I can apply pressure and seal this spout to the body without distorting the body. That's pretty important because I want to make sure my lid fits. I got to make sure this is nice and round. And if I was to do this when the clay was real soft, it just wouldn't, wouldn't work that, that well. Now, Potter has options. Um, he can put a coil of clay around here and blend this in. You can't even tell where the spout meets the body. Or he can use his finger or a wooden tool like this and actually put deep pressure lines joining one to the other and do that all the way around. And that's just another technique. I kind of like this technique once in a while. It shows exactly what the potter did, exactly how he made it. You know the interesting thing about you are the potter, I mean he is the potter and you are the clay, is that God's got his fingerprints all over us. Yeah. All over us. I talked about the three kinds of Christians. It probably wouldn't surprise you to know that there's three kinds of clay. There's earthenware, there's stoneware, and there's porcelain. And those three kinds of clay have, have three sets of characteristics that are all different. The neatest thing about high fire porcelain, which is the purest, smoothest, whitest clay there is, is china clay. Porcelain and china are synonymous. And when a potter makes really fine porcelain that's very thin, you can put a light on the other side of it and actually see the light through it. It's luminescent, I think they call it. But uh, also, fine porcelain, the potter can see his image reflected back in that. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. God would like to see his image reflected back in us. That's good. But what did David say in Psalm 50, 51? Look at verse 2. He's confessing his son. He says, Wash me truly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Not thoroughly, not adequately, truly, through and through. That's when the Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it talks about us being truly furnished. Not thoroughly, truly. Much more powerful, much more permanent, much more well done, all the way through from beginning to end. Look in verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. I'm not going to do as thorough a job with my slipping and scoring on this. I wanted you to see the right way, and I'll show you the wrong way. The truth of the matter is, if a potter joins these things and the clays are really compatible. They're equally the same softness. In other words, the handle's exactly the same softness as the body and so forth. When you're joining them, the slipping and scoring isn't totally necessary, but it is the best way of doing it. I used to make mugs where the mugs were very soft and the handles were very soft, and I would just dip it in water to join the handle. And that was sufficient, especially once it got glazed and fired. We talked about the cleansing power of God's word this morning when we said you could partake of God's divine nature of virtue. And all throughout that lesson, I told you we'd be partakers of his faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, all the way up to charity. Not developing it inside of us, but partaking of his. That's a word you and I don't use, partake. What does it mean? It means take part. Take part of it. There's a historical account in the book of Luke about the woman, you probably heard of her. She had the issue of blood for 12 years. And she said that she spent all her money on physicians and just grew worse. But she knew that if she could but touch the hem of the garment of Jesus Christ, that she'd be made whole, that she'd be healed. Well, Jesus was coming through her town, I guess. And sure enough, she went out. And I don't doubt that in her condition, 
She might have crawled on her knees and elbows.